Hi, I'm Elaine. I'm going to talk about data storage for the computer science series. So first of all, what is number 42? Well, it depends. It's an asterisk in ASCII. It's a grey blue value. So, for example, in here, RGB is set to 42. So it's one of those. Or it's a brown colour, grey brown colour because the HSV settings are set to 41, 42 and 42, so it's one of those. Could represent a pixel of an image. It could be a value related to a sample of a sound wave in an MP3 file. Could be a number, for example, quantity or age. Could be a price. Or part of a time, e.g. seconds. So 42 can be any of these things. It depends. A lot of the time in computer programming we use integers, whole numbers. Normally we, we struggle less with characters, they're represented as ASCII, but whole number integers do present us with a few issues, so I'm going to cover those. You have different types, different names, depending on the language you declare them differently, but a long is 32 bits and a short or an int is 16 bits. Unsigned means it can never be negative, but signed means you can actually have a sign. So it uses one of the bits. You, you end up losing a bit that is used to represent your number. It's important that you always select the most optimal data type for your data. So if you have a counter between 1 and 10, you would not use a long int because you can store a huge number using 32 bits. 7 in binary is just three using 3 bits. Whereas 258 is using 9 bits, 256 uses 8 bits, so obviously you need the ninth bit. The decimal point is always at the end, so it's not really there at all with a whole number integer. So overflow, that's an issue when you're adding a couple of numbers. Let me have a look at this. So we're taking two 16, or sorry, one 16 bit number and I'm showing you the range from all the zeros, where all the zeros are set, all the way to all the ones, where you reach a value of 65,535, which is 65,536 possible combinations achievable with 2 to the power of 16 or 16 bits. So there's a lot of combinations between there, and overflow occurs when you try to add numbers that will be will result in a value higher than this number or higher than what the bits can represent. We can only store an integer from 0 to 2 to the power of n minus 1. So n is the number of bits. Overflow is when we try to store a value that is greater than 2 to the power of n minus 1. Here's an example. So we're adding an integer which is 131 represented in binary 128 plus 2 plus 1. We're adding that to 65,520. I'm not going to add all of those up. And that gives us 65,651, which is clearly bigger than this number requiring a 17th bit to be over here, where that would be set to 1, and then a couple of these bits would be set as well. So that results in overflow, which means that the number cannot be stored. So for resulting numbers of large calculations you may need something larger than a 16 bit if you're using all of the bits for your numbers well let's use few bits to experiment with it's a lot easier to work with smaller bits when you're just learning this so let's look at 8 bits 2 to the power of 8 0 to 7 with all of our numbers represented 130 is 1 to 8 plus 2 and all of the others set to 0 so that's the binary for 130 and 240 is all of these bits set add those together and that gives us 370 well we can't represent the answer so if we had this as an integer and this is an integer imagine that that's the size of an integer and we wanted to store it into a similarly sized integer we would not be able to so that would be overflow so you need to consider that Another example, so what do you think? Is this overflow? I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to think about it. You can pause it if you wish. 
so it is overflow. If it was written in binary, binary, you'd probably see that quite easily because you'd see that the ones that are not set add up to 32 plus 8, 40, plus 2, plus 1, that's 43. Which means 212 plus 43 is all you can add on. You can only add on 43. Well, we've added on a larger number, so that's clearly going to make it 286. That can't be represented in this number of bits, so it is overflow. Well, hopefully you got that. So unsigned integers, which I've just been talking about, are good for, what do you think? Counters, keeping track of how many of something a program has completed, scores, coordinates on the screen when you're doing graphics, addresses, the whole numbers, colors, sound, etc. Sound samples. Signed is different because that needs to store the minus or the plus or some indication of what the sign is. For example, this is an easy way of thinking about it. You could use the last bit for your zero or one. Sorry, for your to represent your plus or minus. In this case, zero for a positive number and one for a negative number. But this method isn't really used for integers, so I'm going to show you what is. First of all, just to remind you, a shorter 16 bit into 16 bit, unsigned into 16 bit, and a long is 32 bits. In order to deal with signed integers, we use two's complement. Two's complement is where you have the whole range from all the zeros to all the ones between two to the power of n minus one split into two and then swapped around. You don't need to worry too much about that because the computer does it all for you, but it looks like this. A little bit weird, but you need to understand what the whole range looks like. And then halfway through, it's swapped around with these numbers representing the minus and these the positive. So that's seven, as you can see, six, five, etc. The computer needs to do the two's complement in order to deal with negatives. So for example, one's complement would be to switch all of the ones and all of the zeros, swap that with a one, all of the ones with a zero. So basically swap everything around. Two's complement is a bit different. They copy the bits from the right until one is copied and then flip the rest. So all of these remain the same, including that one and then everything else is flipped. So one to zero, one to zero, zero to one. That's what two's complement does. So copy the bits from the right until the one is copied and flip the rest. Here we go. And again, that will turn it back, as you can see. So to do the same strategy, we'll just reverse it and it will be back to the original number. So when some data is received, the computer changes the integer to its n bit binary representation. If it's positive or zero, it's stored just as it is, otherwise, two complement is stored. The two's complement representation is stored. Let's have a go with the number 42 and the minus 42. So this is 42, 32 plus 8 is 40 plus 2. So that's the binary for 42. And because it's a positive, value, it's just stored as it, as it is. With the minus number, again, this is 42. But because it's a negative value, it's stored in its two, two's complement form. So repeat a copy until the first one is encountered, copy that and then reverse all of the other values. And that, that results in the right hand sorry, the leftmost bit being a 1. So that's storing the number for minus 42. When you retrieve the number, so when the number's retrieved back, if the leftmost bit is a 1, the computer applies 2's complement, which is doing the reverse. Otherwise, it simply re retrieves it as it is, assuming it's a positive number. So in this example, minus 42 was stored like this. So 
copy the bits from the right until the first one is encountered and copy that and then flip the rest and that gives us our original number which is 42 32 plus 8 is 40 plus 2 and then the sign is added to make it minus 42 so in this case if you have four bits to represent a value you can represent 0 to 15 but with its if it's signed you can represent minus 8 to plus 7. It really is important to store and retrieve data in the same format because obviously the computer needs to know how to deal with it and it will deal with apply to's complement if the number that it's re receiving is in the correct format. And what about real numbers and decimal points and, and so on and so forth? They're quite complicated. I'm not going to go into too much detail because this video will end up quite big and quite intense and the integer one was bad enough was complicated enough especially if you're a beginner number precision can easily be lost so it's very important that we have a way of dealing with decimal places in this case we have a floating point number many languages allow you to create floating point numbers where the decimal point floats allowing different numbers on the left or the right you can use you can represent numbers like this that's quite large and it's often used in scientific and financial number crunching applications here's an example of a single precision 32 bit floating point number the first bit is for the sine exponent followed by 23 for the mantissa with a 64 bit pre precision floating point value we have the first bit for the sine 11 bits for the exponent and 52 for the mantissa. So, other methods of storing data, we've looked at ANSI, ASCII, American Standard National uh, Code for Interchange, Information Interchange, which is seven bits for the one to eight symbols where the letters and the numbers are, and then an extended character set for the further one to eight symbols. We also have Unicode, which is 32 bits, and that's used to represent the characters in different languages. Other um, formats are audio, where samples of waveforms are stored, and depending on how many per second will determine the quality and how much of a, a replica you end up with. Images, you have raster graphics, which store for each pixel the colors, so depending on how many, um, how many bits are used for each color, Will determine the size of the file because each pixel pixel will need to have a color set. Vector graphics are mathematically calculated, so they they can be a lot smaller. And when points are plotted, the next one is calculated using equations. So that's to give you an idea of data storage on a computer. I did concentrate a little bit more on integers and signed integers but there are many other formats that you can explore in detail and I wish you luck exploring, experimenting and researching further. And thank you for watching.